In this video tutorial, we're going to be creating a couple of variations of the sun using Adobe Illustrator. Now we're going to be working with vector images today. Now if you forget what vector images mean, um, basically we can zoom in or enlarge these images as much as we want and they're never going to lose quality. So you can see as I zoom in on the sun here, those lines that make up the image always stay crisp and clean. And they're fantastic um, when you're working with like clip art or cartoon style images. They don't work well with photos, but the cartoon kind of images that we're working with, vectors are great. If you want to work with photos, then you'd probably jump over to Photoshop and use what we call raster images, which are made up of pixels. And if you zoom in on them, they become pixelated and they become a bit blurry or lose a bit of quality. And if you enlarge them, the same thing happens. But we don't have that issue in Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so that is one big advantage of using vector images. They will never lose quality. Okay, so let's get started on creating these two variations of the sun now. Open up Illustrator and make yourself a new file. And from the web templates at the top here, we're going to choose the minimum size, which is 1024 by 768 pixels. Click on create at the bottom and you'll get an empty artboard ready for you to start creating your drawings. So the first thing I'm going to do is put in a background. I'm going to do that by using the rectangle tool. So select that from your toolbox on the left here. And you'll need to get your appearance panel up so you can change the fill and stroke colors. If you can't see this appearance panel, you can always go to your window menu and select appearance. And that's with any panel that I use on the right hand side here. If you can't see it on your screen, just go to your window menu and you can always find it hiding in there to bring it up. Okay, so for the fill color, I'm going to choose a purple. For the stroke color, I'm going to turn it off. Now remember the stroke is the outline or the border of the shape. We don't want that turned on. Now I'm going to start in the top left hand corner. If you hover your mouse around the top left corner, you'll see some pink writing come up that says intersect. That just means we've hit the intersection of those two lines. And we're right in the corner. We're going to click and drag down to the bottom right corner until we see the word intersect again. And then we're just going to let go of our mouse and we've got our um, background all drawn. Okay, I'm going to then go to my layers panel and just expand layer one so you can see this rectangle that you've just drawn. You can toggle the visibility there by pressing that little eyeball. Okay, that just turns it on and off. What I want you to do though is hit the little box next to it to bring up a padlock. That just means we've locked that layer. So we can't pick it up and move it anymore and we can't modify it in any way. It's just locked into position there. You can always unlock it and still move it around, uh, but that's not what we want at the moment. So keep that layer locked. Now something that I forget to do a lot of the times, but we should be doing is renaming our layers. So at the moment it's called rectangle, but if you double click on rectangle and change it to background, that's a more meaningful name. And as you start to create more complex artworks, it's a really good idea to be renaming each of your layers so you know what's going on in your artwork and where to find all the bits and pieces quite easily. All right, so that's our background done. Let's start making the first sun. And to do that, we're going to use the ellipse tool, first of all. The ellipse is just another name for a circle. And... The fill color we want is this bright yellow from our swatches, but then I'm going to go over to the color mixer section and just add a little bit of orange to it by sliding that middle um, green slider to the left a bit. And to draw the circle on the screen, there's a few ways you can do it. You can simply click and drag. That way your circle, it could be an oval, it could be any shape circle that you want. Um, you can hold shift and then click and drag, which will draw a perfect circle. Or you can click once on your backdrop and set the sizes for your circle. So I'm going to set mine to 250 by 250. If you keep that little chain linked there, it will constrain the width and height proportions, meaning that if you adjust the width, it will automatically adjust the height. So if I make this 10,000, the height automatically changes as well. Okay, so for now, we're looking at 250 pixels for the width and height. We'll click on OK. Using your selection tool, that black arrow at the top of your toolbox, just click on those first couple of circles and press delete on your keyboard to get rid of them. And that is your sun all drawn. Okay, it could be as simple as that in your artworks, but I reckon we can get a little bit more fancy and put a few sun rays around our sun. And to do that, I need to draw a triangle next. So from my shapes tool here, I'm going to grab the polygon tool. And I'm just going to hold shift and then click and drag and draw myself a little triangle about that size. I want to change the fill color of it to just a little bit more orange than what we've got at the moment. Something like that will probably look good. And that's the first of the sun rays that will be going around our sun. And we're going to 
do a little technique in a moment to rotate that triangle a few times around the sun to make it look a bit more realistic. First thing we need to do though is um, using our selection tool, click and drag over the top of both of those items. And I want you to find this align panel. Again, if you can't see it, you can always dig it out of your window menu. And what I want you to press is the second option in here that says horizontal align center. And with these two items selected, it's going to horizontally align the center points of those shapes. So now they're perfectly symmetrical. All right, the next step is to get these triangles to rotate around the circle. So I'm going to click once on my triangle so it's selected, and then I'm going to go to my toolbox on the left and grab the rotate tool, which is this arrow here um, spinning in a circle. While I've got the rotate tool selected and while I've got this triangle still selected, I'm going to hold Alt on my keyboard, which is next to the space bar. And then I'm going to hover around the center of the circle until the word center appears. There it is. When you see the word center appear, I want you to click once. A little box will come up asking you how you want to rotate this triangle. Uh, so what we want to do is write in 360 into that box and then divide it by the number of triangles we want to go around this shape. So 360 degrees it is. That's the um, circle there. And we're dividing it by, and I'm going to go 8 for this example. You can put whatever number you like. But I'm going to go 8, because we want 8 triangles to go around this circle. Once you've done that, I just want you to click Copy, and that's going to place one triangle next to the original. Okay, so it started the rotation process. Now before you touch anything else, we want to duplicate what we've just done. So you can do that very quickly by pressing Control D on your keyboard. So if I press Control D, it duplicates that triangle and that rotation um, amount that I already put on it. And if you keep pressing Control D, the rest of the triangles go in. So if you press it a total of seven times, you'll end up with the eight different triangles going around the circle, which gives us our sun rays. And that's our first sun made. So I'm going to highlight all of that. And I'm going to press Control G on my computer, oh, my keyboard, sorry. And just watch the layers when I do this. It groups them all together. I can rename that group now to Sun 1. And all those bits and pieces are now one big image that can be moved all together. So just move it off to the side there. And we can have a crack at drawing the next sun. Okay, so to draw the next sun, we need to use the ellipse tool again. Uh, for the fill color, I'm going to just drop it back to this quite yellow look. And I'm going to click once on the screen and make my um, width and height 200 pixels. That's the first one. I'm going to click again and make the next one 250 pixels width and height. And I'm going to click a third time and make it 300 pixels width and height. So I've got three big circles now on the page. What we're going to be doing with them is changing the colors now. So the big one, I want to be the darker kind of orange. So something, I guess, around there. The second biggest one, so this one here, I'm going to just put it in between those two colors. So it's a bit orange, a bit yellow, it gets the goldy kind of color. And there are my three circles. What I'm going to do now is highlight those three circles so they're all selected and go back to this align panel. And let's first of all horizontally align the centers. Okay, so they're all in one symmetrical line now. If you go across a bit further to this one, we can also vertically align the centers. And that puts them all on top of each other. Okay, now we just need to rearrange our layers here a little bit to, um, so we can see them all again. So at the moment, the big orange one is on top. So we need to drag that down below the other two circles. And then this one here needs to come below that one. So eventually, you'll have the little circle on top in your layers box, the mid-sized circle in the middle of them, and then the biggest circle at the bottom. Okay, so that's the start of our sun. And what we're going to do now is a similar kind of effect with these triangles that we just did with the first sun. So let's go and draw ourselves another triangle using the polygon tool. Hold shift, draw yourself a little triangle and change this color to something a bit more orange than this. It'll be almost red, I reckon, by the time we um, get it in. So something like, yeah, something like that'll look all right. And I'm going to be, um, I'm going to do something a little bit different this time. I'm going to put it overlapping that outer circle. All right, and with this triangle, I'm going to move it behind all of those circles. So drag it down in your layers panel. 
down here. If you can't see that too well, I'll try and zoom in on it for you so you can see it a bit better. Um, so here we are. So you can see you've got the little circle, the mid-sized circle, and the big circle on top, and then the red triangle coming in below it. All right. Now we need to do that um, rotation effect again. So with this triangle selected, go over to your toolbox and grab the rotate tool. Where is it? There it is there, that little arrow spinning in a circle. Again, hold Alt and hover around the center of the yellow circle and click once. Now this time we're going to write 360 and divide it by a lot more triangles. I'm going to try 30. We're going to have a lot of triangles all connected. Um, this time when we draw our sun rays in. So we'll try 30, 360 divided by 30 triangles and click copy. That puts the first one in. You can see it overlapping um, that original triangle and that looks pretty good. So let's press Control D multiple times and you can see your sun rays coming in. Yeah, there we go. That looks pretty good like that. Um, so yeah, I think that looks pretty good for the sun. So what I'll do now is just highlight it all and press Control G. Again, watch the layers panel over here. It groups it all together now into one big shape. So I can rename that to Sun 2. Okay, you can just move that to wherever you want it. But you've now got two different variations of the sun created in Illustrator. I think they all look pretty good. Okay, I'll catch you in a future video where we'll learn to create some more objects.